Okay, so this is going to be about E dot graphics, uh, curves, paths, um, gradients, and clipping masks. So quite a few things. So first, let's get the uh, on paint event uh, paint. Um, I will need to declare a point array. So p array as new as a point is equal to array of I'll just make four points is new point uh, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing so I'm just going to move the button around in order to get coordinates uh, so like so so you get the coordinates you paste it in you close it you do new point move the button to the way you want it here copy the coordinates, it's just easier to visualize the coordinates by doing this okay now I've got the point array I shall um, first show you curves now to do curves you simply pass in the thingy so I'm not going to make a graphics object because I've recently just realized that E creates the graphics in the parameter so if I do e dot graphics dot, and then you can do everything you can normally do with graphics, which is pretty cool. But you still need to use the other old graphics things for some things. But this has got some advantages, which I'll show. But I'll show you two things at once. So draw curve. So this needs a pen. Pretty simple. Next, you need an array of points. Well, we have an array of points. So I'm just going to pass in p, and then you need tension. So I'm going to do tension of 0.5. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this and just show you different uh, tensions. So I'm going to show a tension of 1, a tension of 5, and a tension of minus 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is what I usually use. Um, so let's change this to blue, green, so you, so you can tell the difference between the uh, objects, uh, red. Okay, so this should be good. As you can see, so now this does look a bit chaotic. First, let's just quickly look at the uh, benefits of the e dot graphics. If I do this, you can see it's kept it. And previously, I would need to recreate a graphics object on the resize event, but this kind of does it all in once, which is nice. So that's all good. Um, as for the curves, let's have a look. So I'll put this down to here, and we can compare. So the black line. This is here. It goes up here, down here, and up to here. So that's what the tension of 0 0.5 is. Tension of 1, not too bad, but I would prefer 0 0.5. It goes like this and that. So let's look at the 5, which is the one that's chaotic. So it goes up here. Whoop, and just make sure it passes through all the points. And it's really chaotic. As for the minus 0 0.5, it goes like this. It goes, makes these loops because it kind of flips them as it kind of curves it, curves it the wrong way and so it makes these kind of loops which is pretty cool. So that's curves. Next I'll be showing you paths. Um, dim path as new path. Uh, no, uh, drawing, it's in the drawing 2D namespace dot graphics path. Um, so that's created a graphics path. Next I if you want to add a line to the path. So path dot add line and then you say from point one to point two. So I'm just gonna go from P zero to P one. So I'm just reusing these points up here I use for the curve. Um, so let's just show you what this looks like so far. Dot uh, draw path uh, black and pa. Okay, so this should draw a line. Nothing too amazing. You can also add um, on the graphics object the alias. I think that's what it was for lines. Yeah, I can't even buy any tutorials. Um, so let's then add a curve to it. Um, previously, I forgot to say that you can only add a curve to something if there's three or more points. If you try and curve it, you, I'll explain it when I add the curve and you'll be able to see why. 
So add curve. Uh, so it's a point array it wants. Um, so I'm going to. I don't want to pass in zero because I've already done zero. So I'll do uh, P1, P2, and P3. So I've made a new array of the old array of components. Then let's add tension. We found that 0 0.5 was a decent tension. Um, okay, so as you can see here, so this point, the first point of a curve, and the last point of a curve need to be exact. That's just how curves work. Um, but then the other points, like here, I can like curve it around. But considering the rule of this, they need to be exact the first and last. If I was to remove this, you would see it just create a straight line. Which is not what we want, no matter how big the tension is. It will actually, um, if I wrap tension up to 100, it will make a very long straight line, which is a bit of a, not a bug, but unusual behavior, let's say. Um, but yeah, you just, you have uh, two or more, uh, three or more. Okay, so that's why they have it as an array rather than 0.1, 0.2, because they want you to add a lot more. So that's pretty much what paths are. Um, finally, you can close a path to connect up the first and last point. So d dot close figure, and this should draw a line from the last to the first. And looks like the Visual Studio logo a little bit. Fill path, and then change this to uh, brushes black. Okay, so this should fill it in black, like so. Um, and was that anti-aliasing? Yes, it was. Good. Um, so let's look at gradients. So what you can do, we'll make a dim rect as rectangle uh, zero zero dot uh, width height as so new rectangle. Um, and then d dim g grad I guess as new gradient I think it's in drawing 2d uh, new drawing 2d dot gradient linear gradient brush so this is actually inherited from brush so you can actually use it as a brush parameter which I'll use in a second so First of all, you need. Um, well, I'm going to pass in a rectangle, but you can do a gradient from one point to another. And I think that will draw a gradient line. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to show you rectangle. So, rectangle, I'm going to pass in rect, which is the variable it's made. And then a color will go from red to blue. And then the angle. So, zero will go from put the red on the left to blue on the right um, I'll just draw that and I haven't done the drawing code um, so e dot graphics dot uh, fill rectangle so you're still filling a rectangle it's just you're using this gradient brush rather than a normal brush so I'm going to pass in grad and then fill the rectangle so this should work as you can see, we get a gradient from red to blue. Now, this this angle rotates um, clockwise, which might be a bit anti-intuitive for you, for you mathematicians out there. Um, but I'll prove that it's clockwise. Like you can see, I've done 20, and it's pushed the red up and the blue down, which is clockwise. OK, so now we've got a path and a gradient. So let's say if you wanted to make a clipping mask. So what this is, or this is using Photoshop as well, uh, it basically says I want only this area to be filled. Um, so what you do, you do e.graphics.setclip pa and that will say you're setting up the gradient. Now if you want to use the graphics object after this and you want to disable the graphics clipping mask then you do uh, clip, what was it, 
reset clip. There we are. Um, so this should do a clipping mask of the Visual Studio logo, which it has. So that's everything you need to know. I believe that you can't do any anti-aliasing on a clipping mask, but I am probably wrong. <laughs>